This is my intro. Yeah. I got Chucky Chuck in the building. Mr. Degaff <coughs> in the building. Code word, uh, mummy pickles. I'll teach you about that. That's when you get out of control and your friends out of control. You tell mummy pickles. Welcome to the off the meds podcast. Off my meds. Off my meds. Because I'm, I'm not on yours, but I want to try some of yours. What you got? Yeah, I got the juice like a snow cone. Ice in my veins and a cold flow. I'm getting cash overseas by the boat. Be real at Nam. And I was talking to him about his that's podcast. And so I was like showing him and they were like, oh, t everybody recognizes Tony. You know what's Tony. funny is that's where I seen him last because Tony would always be at the Rainbow Room smoking. And I go to Apocalypse and some mm -hmm. guys from come out the original group. And he's just sitting there. I'm like, isn't that the dude from? He's like, yeah, they're just normal people. Yeah. And we're talking about wrestling and all kinds of it. She's humble as well. You're a wrestling it. fan? Me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me. Around. Who'd you grow up on? Well, I was an 80s baby, so it was obviously like Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant. Yeah. I was Ultimate Warrior. Yep. Bushwhackers. Demolition. Superfly Snooker. Superfly, for sure. The Godfather. That's my homie right there. Yeah. I just got to see some wrestling recently at the um, Juggalo Weekend in. Uh, no way San did Antonio, they have... They had uh, Juggalo Championship Wrestling. <gasps> Stop it. Yeah. And then recently, my other bandmate became friends with a man named Matt Riddle. He was in WWE. Uh -huh, now he's, uh -huh. he's going to all these little sanctions and taking over. We're doing a song for his uh, intro going out. And he's fighting Rob Van Dam, our other old friend, the pothead wrestler, Rob Van Dam. Wow. So, yeah, I'm pretty deep in the wrestling. And you went there that last weekend, right? You had Friday, the Juggalo so weekend? Juggalo weekend. Fuck yeah. It was insane. I'm sure it was insane. I'm not going to lie um, that he's, they are definitely somebody that is on my, on my like bucket list of guest items. Cause I like, I would be ready to go. That would like make my entire They're life. doing They're it right dope. now too. They're doing any podcast and every, I just seen one on Bootleg Kev the day before we play and. Adam I think they did Two Bears, One Cave. Cheers, by the Cheers, way. Cheers, yeah. It is, uh, is 4.30 on a Friday. It's uh, probably the best time of the week. Is it yeah. good? You like it? Yeah, bourbon. Yeah? Hold on. I got to drink like that, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Friday. I thought it was Sunday, like I said. I don't know. It's oh, wait. I got to fix your camera. Hold on. I f***ed up. I f***ed up. You f***ed up. That's what they I say at those gatherings. You f***ed up. Stop. I had to, the whole crowd will do that. I had to get a shot of the you with the uh, brown sugar pop tarts. Oh you know? man! But if you break those up and put them in some ice cream, now you're talking. Oh, for sure. Some, pink. but the butter. I've never. I don't think I've ever had a pop tart toasted with butter. Yeah, it melts on it. And then if you want to get extra crazy, put some more sugar on it. I'm talking heart attack right now. It's like security yeah. cameras. Like they're they're entering that room over here. Everything <laughs> we see them, they're stealing stuff over here. We got every angle. Got quite the setup. It's uh. It's been fun. I like having it in my place. I didn't know how I was going to feel about it because I'm like, you're actually the first guest that I've met for the first time on here. Everybody right. else, like, I've known. And so... Uh, We're around the place. Fine. <laughs> no, Put your hands up. Just kidding. Nah. But yeah, I think... It, I think I don't know. This this is turning out to be uh, pretty cool. So you were on your own prior to being in Cottonmouth Kings. I was a fan of Cottonmouth Seriously? Kings. I was a fan of them. I was... Always rap, battle rap. I grew up in um, Hermosa Beach, Redondo Beach. Mm -hmm. Black Flag, Pennywise, Descendants. Are you scared? Everyone was punk rock. Punk, yeah. punkers, punk, punking. It's in my blood. I love punk rock, but there's something about when I heard N.W.A. or Snoop Dogg or Corrupt and that West Coast gangster rap, that at that point I was like, you know what? I'm a rapper. I'm going to rap. So I started getting into Wu-Tang and like lyrical stuff, Deltron. Funky Homo Sapien. Oh um, yeah. Heard of like Cool Keith, Dr. Octagon, mm -hmm. MF Doom, KRS-One, Supernet, Freestyle Fellowships, underground rap, like lyricist stuff, not these modern day kids that are mumbling over their, uh, don't get me started. Mumble rap. But yeah, I started joke. battle rapping at school and, and rapping over other people's stuff. And um, one of my friends brought me over his house, shout out to Gillies, and he knew that I heard of the band Insane Clown Posse, and they're like, these guys on the CD are talking about ICP. Sure enough, they were. I'm like, who is this shit? And it was, um, I don't know if we can cuss, huh? Yeah. Okay, fuck. Fuck, <laughs> yes. Anyways, it was Cottonmouth Kings, and the, uh, the, the guy, Saint Dog, rest in peace, was talking about, the, the radio was on, the CD was bumping, and Saint Clown Posse talked about Chicken Hut, and I was like, wait a minute, what? He's like, yeah, the dudes live down the street. And so I was like, oh, that's, that's crazy. I 
we went to see him a little bit, kind of fanned out, didn't want to go say hi to mm-hmm. him. Meanwhile, I'm a senior in high school. It's 1998. I was a senior in high school. Uh-huh. So I got in a little bit of trouble. I was like, I guess I was home at detention or something when you get suspended or expelled. So I had MTV when they actually played videos and it mm-hmm. wasn't like mm-hmm. ridiculousness all 24 hours uh, a day. I, it's on a constant loop. Man, good. Maybe my bro, Dollar Rob, where you at? Yeah, yeah, Come yeah, right. Buck. Anyways. Genius. Um, videos were on. And the first one that I caught was Eminem, Hi, My Name Is. And I was like, that dude's white. I remember that video. That dude's white? He's white? I heard him on the radio, but then I seen him on TV and he's white. I was like, oh, man. And then he's with Dre and he's white. I was like, well, there goes that. I'm not going to be able, there's already a huge white rapper guy right here. So I'm not going to be the one. Because as a kid, I wanted to be a motocross racer. But I crashed a couple of times and it's so expensive. We didn't grow up like. Yeah with a bunch of money so it was like you're on your own after you broke your neck so um the next video that came on was the cop mouth king's bump and i was like wait a minute those are those fools that my homeboy showed me and then i seen some of my friends in the video and i was like man i started tripping and devising a plan next video was cash money bling bling fucking um little wayne he must have been 18 19 at the, at the time he just one tattoo cash money on his stomach Oh, there goes the pillow. <laughs> We're breaking the set already. <laughs> that means to have a shadow bird. Uh, Bump is probably one of my favorite songs. Come on. That's the sound of the 50s while they're hitting in my trunk. Legendary. Trump. I seen Cash Money and uh, Lil Wayne, he had Cash Money's tattooed on his stomach. I go, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get the Kamo Kings logo tatted on my stomach and just invade their circle. Did you? Do you have a tat? Yeah, I got it on my stomach I need for the, life. Oh, there goes, there, there goes again. Now, what is that for so you don't hit your head on the No, toilet? it's so, it's because this is in the way, and until I figure that out, I'm like blocking shit. I'm just like making shit up. You know what? You're winging it. You got to sometimes just wing it, pull yeah, it off. Yeah, yeah. You know, if I would have overthought everything on this podcast, it would never have happened. So I'm just like, you know, going and figuring it out. It yeah. works. Can I just fix this? Yes, please. Because I think it's... It's like one of those hairy... Um, I know. Um, Caterpillars I turn into butterflies. Hi, kitty lion. That's like a lion cat. Oh, yeah, we were supposed to put him in. He's actually being okay. He is a lion cat. He's actually, he's a wild cat, like a hybrid. Um, he's the dopest cat oh, ever. Oh, so sativa so. and indica? Cat? Yeah, That's cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh, buddy? What uh, What do you prefer? I'm a couch smoker. I'll, sm- I'll wake up and hit indica straight up. Really? Yeah, hit me, hit me to the couch right off the bat. Damn. But then I will get up and be productive. Don't get me wrong. See, I can't do that. I can't do that. Some sativas get me all paranoid, but it's just crazy. Is that but, what makes me paranoid? Is it sativa? I don't know. To each his own. But when I smoke some sativa, I'm like, I start questioning everything. A little. It's not a bad thing, but like, I get, I don't know. Instead of taking like Xanax or a hardcore pill to take a nap, you maybe eat some indica. Um, Agreed. Uh, Amen to that. Indica edible or a indica bong rip joint. I've been getting back into wax, mommy, from Hash and Hetty's. We're making these extracts, and that's one dab is a whole entire joint to the face. <laughs> and then you've got to figure out where you're going to sleep and what you're going to eat. <laughs> Which isn't a bad thing. Yeah. There's no downside. No. You don't have to worry about not waking up the next morning. It's the, the amount of just a quick side turn like the amount of fentanyl deaths that happen from like everyone Man. in every circle is insane it's yeah insane shout out to the homeboy jelly roll who's really putting that on the map right now too one from the congress agreed agreed and, 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 that, using like, his using that platform to get that notice and it's just getting swept under the rug but mm-hmm. not when you got a fool like that out in front lines Nah, that, that was speech amazing. was good. That yeah. speech was really good. Me and the homies are like tearing up. We're like, don't cry. Yeah. Hold it together for us. I know. I'm proud of that dude. I love that. I love that. What were we talking about? Oh, your tattoo. Yes. Kama King's Blaster Pro 98. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sammy the Bull. He's actually he's actually in the hospital it. right now. He suffered a heart attack. Oh, no. Went under for five minutes and then went under uh, flatline for another 15 minutes about four or five days ago. So the praise for Sammy the Bull. He's... Holy going through shit. all kinds of surgery, but um, he's on the good foot. His heart's beating. He's alive. He's probably going to make it, so we're praying for him. Damn. But he's the one who tattooed my stomach. And then they slid a picture to the DJ at the time, Bobby B, and they're like, we don't need any more friends, but bring this guy over. And that, that was that was a wrap. After that, I, I ended up moving in with D-Lo. He lived in L.A. at the time. He's like, yo, I'm going to Japan. Watch my house. 
my homeboy Fab, and he lifts up this, uh, and it's just shoe boxes. I'm like, cool, I got a bunch of shoes. But it was just stacks of merchandise money. Oh, just wow. from merchandise. He's all, this is all my money I've saved from all my tours. I'm like, I just met this fool. And he's trusting me to watch all this cash. I'm like, all right, this is, this is trust. And he went to Japan. And his roommate was a shit. Shout out to Fab. He was um, a hairdresser, but also a photographer. He did like Tupac album covers, super uh, suicidal tendencies. He's a Venice Beach yep. local, Fabrice. He'd have like parties, and Steve O would come over, leave his socks, and we'd circle the socks with some spray paint. So Dilo came in and said, What the hell is going on in the house? I'm like, Dude, those are Steve O's socks. He's like, What? Rad. Sick. And his box of money was still there. And then he goes, you should learn how to set up the stage with munchies and, and learn how to like plug in the, the speakers. And then I ended up getting a chance to go on tour in 2002, which seems like yesterday, but it's five. Well, that's a long time ago. Long time ago. And uh, it was Rolling Stone tour. This was when they were still on Capitol Records. Big budget tour mm -hmm. buses, a van, promotional van. They'll go to the town before they'd go to go put flyers on everywhere, not just hoping you'd see them on an Instagram flyer, like yeah. promoting these days, like hope you see the post. No one's making these flyers or putting them up like they no, used to that was the, the, that was the heyday when yeah. people used to have to stand outside of other shows still, and be still, like, yeah. here's my shit, mm -hmm. come next week. Uh-oh, I got you. <laughs> Bring it in, tie it up. But, um, We're just gonna. They still do it in LA big with the big old posters and the glue. Yeah. What about those? Uh, now we're having pillow fights. <laughs> That's good. That's good. We're good. Fuck. Yeah, guerrilla marketing Jesus. back in the days. I was going to roll on one of those vans where I'd go to the town before the show and just go to the high schools and go to the local bars and yeah. hand out flyers, but it was full to the brim. There was no room. And luckily, I was friends with some of the guys in the band. They're like, yo, just hop in the, the, the bus. It'll be the, a couple days that'll be uh, emptied. I'm like, all right. And the guys are like, oh, I'll go. The other guys are like, I'll go. They're like, no, no, no. Chuck's on the bus. Long story short, I ended up staying on the bus, became part of the crew, learned how to set up stage. That same album, d said my name in like a verse, so then I would not know, but the first night he like threw me the microphone and like I'd rap before, and but not in front of like 2,000, 3,000 people. Thrown so, into the mix. Throw, and I, I was right there and I was just, at that point I was like, okay, this is what it is. Cause I saw you, I saw you open for them as your own mm -hmm. artist at the observatory Probably Jingle Balls or something like that, or like um, 2015, yeah. 14. Yeah, yeah, maybe 2015, 16, yep. yeah. Well, I got I got put on with Cottonmouth, and then there was an artist named Big B mm -hmm. who does a lot of um, stuff with Harleys and, uh, no, I shouldn't say Harleys, Indian motorcycles with the, the likes of Carrie Hart, uh, gold medalists, all the X Games guys, and rad dudes, cool guys. And Big B knew I was going to go on tour with Cottonmouth. He's like, hey, I got this album coming out. It's called... Um, high class white trash, listen to it, do my backups. So then, no more putting up on stage. I became a, like part of the crew, and I was doing his backups. And then we started the Summer Soldiers group with all of us together, like the White Wu Tang, everyone on the label. And then got together with Saint Dog, rest in peace. We did the DGAF record, which that was pretty legendary. That was 2008. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, that's when the recession kind of hit too. There's something with, with the houses. Mm -hmm. a lot that of, was 08. A lot of uh, bad stuff happened. So it was kind of like a struggling time for everyone. And so Ruben Noise Records had a falling out with this dude, Brad X, who was part of the businessman, Johnny Bravo from the Johnny uh, Jenny Bravo. Jones mm -hmm. show. Oh, you mean? <sighs> Johnny Bravo from the Jenny Jones. Remember Jenny Jones? Not Rude Jude. Rude Jude. Shout out to Rude Jude. But the other guy. I love Rude Jude. Yeah, he's the best, right? Yeah, 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 was, yeah. He's still on Shady 45 with his radio station thing. It's heartbreaking. Is he? Wait, no, he's not with oh, them. Oh, that sucks. No, they let him go. He's like, the best. They um they screwed they did some Damn. he was angry. He was posting a lot. I would follow the whole thing because he was like everybody was like, How could they they do you like that? Like you that was your show. And he's Man. like Yeah, they had yeah, he's me. He's funny. He was funny. But Johnny Bravo, he was um he had Draggy Style and a band The Humble Gods. Mm -hmm. He's actually signed with Easy E's record label, Ruthless Records. Wow. Back in the day. Helped. Uh, discover the likes of Gwen Stefani, uh, Sugar Ray. Wow. And then uh, these are stories I've heard. And then a man named Kevin Zinger, Pennywise, Strung Out, mm -hmm. Sprung Monkey, so everyone. He's now he's managing Sublime, where they got 
Jacob coming in. The dude. Yeah, I'm amazing. S- he sounds so I haven't good. been able to catch any of it yet, but I'm, I'm hoping since There's I know a, some people. I'll send you the video that he, they, they had him covering. I don't know what it was, but I was like, yo, that guy, he clearly has studied for a long time to sound that's crazy. Like that, his that's, dad. that's crazy. I'm, that's how it works um, the universe in this way. So but, um, for Jake. I, I vote for me Jake. Too. Never met Rome. Me too. He's, you know, that guy lost his dad really young, and you just hope. Yeah. You that's know? Crazy story, all that is. Well, yeah, Kevin Zinger is now managing them, and uh, those two own Suburb Noise together. Mm-hmm. And somewhere down the line, someone got involved with some crazy ass drugs, and I can say no names, Brad X. But had a wild hair up his ass and had a whole lawsuit. It was ugly for years, like big lawsuit. He ended up losing it. He started another record label and I went in blind loyalty. That's when you saw us, it was called United Family Music. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Kamal Kings, Dirtball was in at the time. Shout out to Dirtball. I was doing some solo stuff, C4 Miller, then a couple other artists on the label. And that quickly melted around 2016 for me. I had enough of that. And then I branched out off the dinghy on my own which was probably one of the toughest things to do when you're in a conglomerate built-in fan base of the Kama Kings and mm-hmm. the whole ICP juggle of culture too accepts you. And it's like, you don't have to go anywhere. If you have maybe a thousand fans, you can make a living doing this. So I kind of focused on making my fans happy and I've been doing that ever since. I had a fallen out with some of the guys and rekindled our relationships. And now um, we're back thriving. Okay. And it is amazing what's going on. Like I was just telling you before we got to do Juggalo Weekend, which was a 20-year anniversary of the Wicked Wonka tour. Oh, wow. So it had Tech 9 Cottonmouth Kings, Bone Thugs and Harmony, ICP. This is 2003. And I was on that tour too every, every show. Recognize. And that was the first time I got to see ICP live. So I was a big fan of them. And just their whole stage was set up and the, the soda throwing and... Knowing their music and putting all together, I was like, this is crazy. It's wild. It's, it's so wild. And, and like, I know some people don't get it or they mock it, but I'm like, dude, anybody, any musician that can generate a cult following like that, like, it's cool to watch. And like a bunch of people just having a good time. Yeah. And I just like, I've always found that shit cool. And everybody yeah. speaks each other's lingos. It's the Swifties it. of. It's like you get accepted no matter what. You, yeah, you got dirty jeans on. You got a fucking zit in your face. You're not the downers. You don't not the riches. Who cares? Yeah. Come on in and have a drink, have fun. Or you could be the coolest motherfucker on earth, and they'll still accept you. It's like that culture is insane. Clown posse, juggle a whoop whoop. It's dope. Yeah, those guys are. They don't got swag. They got pizzazz. They're like actors and just characters. Characters. Just full blown characters. Their stage setups are crazy. It's amazing. That's how I always felt also about, I mean, it's not the same fan fan base wise, but like the same with Cypress Hill or Cottonmouth Kings, like all of those, all of those shows that were like, let's all like get on stage, smoke and just like have a good fucking I seen, time. I seen Cypress Hill at the gathering of the Juggalos. Really? Yes. Years before I was, um, my first baby mom was on B-Reels TV and he was talking about how he would never do the gathering because Method Man got hit in the face. He's all, they were talking about, oh, that's Chucky Chuck's uh, wife. Tell my woo-woo juggalos, uh, will we'll, we'll Cypress Hill play the gathering? And he was like, fuck no. <laughs> do you hear what they did to my homeboy? But long story short, I seen b Raw at, at the gathering. I'm like, I thought you never played. And he just hands us this big old joint. And they killed it. That's they dope. They killed it. And, um, I actually did the, I got to do the smoke box with D-Lo too before their mm-hmm. show. And man, shout out to West Coast Cure and DNA Genetics, Be Real, Cypress Hill. Those are some good cats. Nice. Yeah, let's see. This is my buddy. Heath well, Ledger is 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 the way to go. Right? I, Dude, that is insane. I would go lay there right where he laid to died. Where was it at? Oh, no, that's River Phoenix. Oh. He, <laughs> that was a Viper Room. Like, wrong oh rock star indeed. <laughs> oh, wrong movie star. <laughs> where did fucking Heath Ledger at the hospital? Overdose? Overdose. No? Yeah? Google it. Yes, because uh, I think he name? was on a I think he was on a concoction of Sick like one. antidepressants and heroin. like heroin. Oh, I don't I don't I know. I heard that. heroin. Who'd you hear that from? TMZ. <laughs> they there was a twenty miles an hour zone or thirteen miles an hour zone? Oh maybe. Shout out to TMZ, they're cool. You like TMZ? Yeah. 
Have uh, they given you good PR before? You know what? I've been on there twice. One time because I almost burnt, got burnt down in a video shoot, almost died. <gasps> and then second time is when we blew a quarter, no, about a pound of weed in two minutes at the concert outside the Kush talk with the homeboys from like Elite <laughs> Solutions. We came out there with the, um, the, the leaf blowers, but pounds of weed, and we had three of them going at the same time. It was the first time they had been hot boxed outside the stadium. Holy shit. We made it on... Uh, Every uh, probably news hit news, headline. New York Post, uh, TMZ. My mom goes, come in here, Charlie. You're on gut field. <laughs> Look at rapper Chucky Chuck having a great old time. We're just blowing the club. It's crazy. Like, we're just get. I want to get That, was, get that wasn't the first time we've done that either. That was just like the first time I got captured and was done at that magnitude. Yeah. And like, oh, that was amazing. Did you ever go to, did you go to Smoke Out? Do you remember Smoke Out? Oh, yeah. Shit, that One was, of the other they need to bring it back. Yeah. They need to bring out, Smoke Out Fest was dope. Yeah, these have them homies Twitch and all them jumping dirt mm -hmm. bikes there too. And mm -hmm. Whitey Ford with Cotton Mouth we played there. They don't do festivals at like, block. it was Blockbuster and then it was San, Sam, Sam or yeah, Deboer yeah. or whatever, yeah. I seen them at that, uh, was it somewhere in LA? I think it was a Coliseum or something like that. Cypress Hill with, uh, with a, Atmosphere and Z Trip. Yes. Yes. And the, uh, that was Whitey like the Ford, first show Whitey post Ford COVID, uh, like closed down stuff. Yep. Yeah, that crazy. show was dope. That show was dope. And uh, like my friend's a huge Atmosphere fan, but she had never seen Cypress Hill, I and she was like, story. "This is awesome." Z Trip. Have you met Z Trip or have you heard? Yeah, yeah, Dude, that I, guy. He's the first person I've seen have a whole dance floor turn from a. B boy pop locking to so straight mosh pitting. Yeah. The next yeah. song. It was uh it was um shout out to my homeboy, DJ Swamp. DJ Swamp? Yeah, he's savage. He's a DJ for like uh Beck. He's Beck's oh, DJ yeah. and Ministry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Caterpillar. Caterpillar walking. <laughs> uh Executioners, Mixmaster Mike and Z Trip at the House of Blues. That Ooh. was a lineup of DJ and it was I met, uh, DJ Z Trip murdered it. He was crazy, till this day. I watched. I watched a couple. His set was so good, but he had a he had an EDC set that was like the virtual raveathon when it was like it was like May 2020. Yeah. And I was like, dude, this guy is so good. You said you were expelled from school. Several times. Several times. In, in uh, high well, school, my first time really in trouble. High school was freshman year. I took seven hits of. Uh, LSD blotter ass. <laughs> Should we smoke this now or what? Why did I be? That's the first time they had cops on campus. This is a 19, I'm gonna date myself, 1995 or four. And they had um, Officer Waddles, bitch. <laughs> Fuck you. Redondo Beach Police Department. And uh, we're, I was slaying an ass all day. Uh, this is back when the Grateful Dead was still touring. We'd go down to Venice Beach, meet the, the, the roadies. And the people from the Grateful Dead. Yeah. And they're selling four-way window panes. <laughs> they're we, gonna demonetize my channel so we fast. We did it for like cheap. <sighs> and you don't you don't do it at all. They're four-way window panes supposed to split them with four people. I got a call up to the office around third period. I've already slang like hundred bucks worth. <clears throat> so I thought, oh, this is it. I'm going to jail. I'm in trouble. Be careful with that. There's a little bit of extracts wax in there too. God, you scared the fuck out of me, what? dude. I, well, thought, you were gonna be, I thought you were going to be like, speaking of LSD, uh, yeah. by the way. Well, I was dipped in formaldehyde. You want to watch me? Oh. Smoke some PCP with you real quick. <laughs> fuck no. <laughs> I would panic. That would be... <laughs> my brain works too fast. The, the bad trip would be a thing for me. Oh, yeah. That's what we're talking about, the bad trip. No, dude. So, I, I have too much trauma. So I took... I, I, I got a call to the office. I'm a freshman. I had two older brothers. My oldest brother, Marcel, shout out to him. He was like a football star. He was going to Missouri State Division One playing football. Mm -hmm. And my other brother, Lynn, never missed a day of high school. He ended up becoming like Blizzard uh, video game extraordinaire guy, making the bush in the video game do its thing while the storm was going. You know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah, editing yeah, yeah. stuff, being smart about it. I have a couple of friends that used to work at Blizzard. That's cool. I love video games too. What are you playing right now? Uh, MX versus ATV Legends. It's a dirt bike game. And it's just virtual dirt bikes. That, psh, I just sit there for hours and rip it. Dirt bike games, huh? Yes. yes. No, no, like, you don't like shooter games or, or like Call of Duty? No. no. That yeah. shit gives me anxiety. 
Really? No GTA? I'll try to shoot here and I'm getting shot over here. I, I, where are they shooting from? GTA is <laughs> the shit. Even the first one was just a little specks <laughs> of the cars. <laughs> but now they're getting out of hand. I forgot what we're talking about. Oh yeah, ass <laughs> I get called to the office and I'm like, what am I going to do? They're like, Charlie DeVries, that's my real name. He, uh, Your real name's Charlie? Charlie? Charlie, yeah, Charles. <clears throat> Hence Chucky, Charles, Lee Ray, and the Chucky doll. But uh, I get a call up to the office, Mr. Casillas, He's still cool, but fuck you. And he goes, I go up there and I'm like, man, I got seven hits left. And I'm like, I'm not gonna stash this, I'll lose it. So I'm just gonna put it in my mouth. Like, I thought it was a plastic with some um, foil. I'm gonna talk to him real quick and just get it over with. So I uh -huh. had it hidden in my mouth. And I go and he's like, Charlie, how you doing? How's, how's Marcel doing over the individual? I was like, he's doing great. Blah, blah, everything's cool. He's like, well, what's up with this detention you have to do after school today? Your brother's never, you got a detention? I was like, Oh man, I was waiting to do it today. I'm gonna do it right after school. I got out of there. I tried to take it out of my mouth. I could already taste it. Too late. Too, too late. It got stepped through. And I told one homie, and he went and told a couple people. I was gonna tell one person. I think the first class I had was PE, and I was like overly sweating. And I used to play basketball pretty good, or like badminton. And like I was off my game. Like, what's wrong with you? I was like, I think I shit my pants or something. I was just sweating so much. I'm like, I didn't poop my pants, but I just felt like you know, like when you're on. I did a yeah. lot of acid. It was hitting me. And uh, I told my big essay homie, Joe Farrell, he ended up dying, Redondo recipes. Joey Farrell, I go, man, he's like, what was wrong with you today? I was like, oh, I got called the office and I took all that acid. He's like, what? Too much. How old were you? I was probably 14, 15, freshman, high school. And he goes, oh man, I fried on acid. The homies were like, scared the shit of me. They started going like this. Rah! And I thought, what the f and then it kicked in. He That's was some fucked up. up friends he right there. He started chasing me. No, and my no, kid, no. bell rang. I'm full of bone <laughs> frying at this point. <clears throat> Trying to find my class. So I finally find my class. I put my book back down. And everyone's looking back like, oh, yeah. They're already saying, oh, yeah, he's fucked up. Words and numbers are falling off my paper. I'm like, what the hell? That people? I look up and the teacher's like, is everything okay? I'm like, just great. And the, the boards they were just writing on, uh, when they just started doing like the, not chalk, you know, with the markers, so you could just wipe it away. That shit was just red. And it's but get your bags and go. Remember when I said this the first year they had cops on campus? Yeah. I knew the route to get off campus, so I was just, keep on swimming, keep on swimming. But the got, route started moving. Yeah, and I get I got off campus, but then I looked around, I couldn't see shit, I couldn't read the signs, I'm like, I'm definitely not at school anymore. Oh, I no. I started hitchhiking, and I got a, um, some Paisai essay dude picked me up. He had a big old bump and that stuff. I'm like, you got any other kind of music, man? He's like, no, sir, no, sir, no, sir. I'm like, I can't take this ride. I was frying balls at this time. So I get out, and then he goes and slams on the brake, and then my backpack comes flying. I was like, hey, you forgot your backpack. Oh, yeah. This time I'm starting to get hot, so I took my shoes off. <laughs> I, I, I take my shirt off. I had like a wife beater, walking with my socks, and my, my shorts. I'm just... Wandering, and I see the um, con the city workers right there, and these fools are drinking water, and I'm thirsty. They're all having a little break. I'm like, oh man, can I get some water? And they're like, yeah, sure. Ah, it's just so good. I'm like, so what are you guys doing? They go, you see all these telephone poles? This is downtown Redondo Beach, mind you. There's a million telephone poles everywhere, and I'm like, yeah, man, I see all of them. And they're like, we're taking them all down. And I was all, dude, you don't know how intense that sounds to me right now because I'm frying on complete acid for every window pinch. Just spilled my guts. He's like, no way. I used to fry with Jimi Hendrix. And like showed me this tattoo of Jimmy playing the guitar. And I'm like, that's epic. What the tattoos are this shit? I didn't have one at the time, I'm 14. And he goes, hey man, sit on this curb and watch this tree. It's gonna do some shit. And sure enough, that tree just started doing some shit, but he went and called the cops. The cops on me and they came. I just felt like heat and there's cop cars and I freeze and for, freeze means run. So I'm, Whoa! I start running, they tase me down and I woke up fully. Did you just say freeze means run? Shout out to Triggs, yeah. <laughs> Recipes, Triggs, too, too many dead homies, but freeze means run. Straight up, that log that in. So I get tased, they think I'm on PC, they don't know what's going on, they say acid. I was in full blown dirt by gear in the, Ambulance, like, how was I doing? Was I in first place? They're like, you were doing good, so you crashed. Kind of like laughing at me. And then they pushed me out. I see my mom and dad, and then it all came to me, like, oh shit, I'm in trouble. 
And then I went to the judge, jury execution chair right there. They had me uh, handcuffed to the um, table or the, the chair. I'm like make, making sparks. And I was like, they're electrocuting me already. Went to San Luis Obispo for about a week, a uh, mental place. So I sat down with this dude named Joey. And anytime I moved, he'd start screaming. And I'd get closer and he'd start screaming more. And I started being like, ah, I wanna, I'm gonna kill this guy. They go, stop. He's, he thinks he's a cup of water, and every time you move, he's gonna spill him. I'm like, I just tackled him. Boom! And he's, you're right. You're, and then, uh, you know, I got from the board of directors, and I didn't go back to school that year, but I did come back sophomore year. And that's how I got the name Chucky Chuck, don't give a fuck. <laughs> Shout out to Albert who named me that. And the story was I was running around butt naked. Chuck was butt naked running the streets on ass. Don't give a fuck. BGAF. I like it. Do God a favor. Was that the last time you went, uh, had had an interaction with uh, the Popo? I mean, I see cops all the time. and I, <laughs> I just smile now because I got a license and registration. So I don't know. Like, they scare me, though. Still, when I'm not even doing nothing wrong, I see a cop. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. And some of them are here to serve and protect, but most of them are here to, I don't know, like some harass tell, and, Some uh, tells me they're really nice to your type. <laughs> you know what they'll look at me and they'll be like yo where'd you parole from and as soon as I say one word they're like oh yeah dude fucking cool cool story bro I, 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 I just gotta talk to them because the tattoos are one thing you get that if you see someone tatted like me they're like oh this guy's gonna clutch my purse like I've been in line at Ralph's and this lady's holding her daughter and clutching the purse I'm like oh. I forget I'm like all oh, these things didn't wear off yet Cracker Jacks are for real <laughs> you know what I mean yeah and uh like the lady goes, hey, uh, you want your Monopoly piece? I go, no, ma'am, but you can give them to the kind lady and her daughter next to me. And they're like, oh, can we please? I was like, sure, thank you so much. So like just little reactions like that might change their perspective on a fully tattooed, grown, 43-year-old knucklehead fuck who would tell and scare them, but I would help them walk across the street. and. I like that. You know? That's a great, that's a great perspective. Like, fuck you. Yep. You want to, like, judge me, I'm just going to go high. And you was, know? There's certain times too when we're traveling across country, we're like, we're all pretty tatted, but like, yo, Chuck, stay in the car. We don't need <laughs> to stay in the car. And I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, they don't even be seen right now. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. I'll just wait right here. It's fun. But shout Chuck, out to all my Chuck, boys. Stay been, in the car. Hold yeah. on. I'm going to get a refill really quick. I've been slacking over here. I've done some dumb shit in my days, but I just, I just can't figure out how to stop doing it. But I haven't died yet, so that's. That's, that's a good thing. I'm going to mark that up as a win. Someone said the other day, he's like, dude, you're 43. You're fucking lucky, man. You're Why? You're 42? 43. Oh, nice. They're like, you're lucky. I was like, what? I know. You said you were born in the 80s. I was like, I don't. 1980. I, yeah, I'm 34. So like, but. Congratulations. The older you get, the younger you are. That's the new thing is living longer. Yeah. Oh, you're old. No, I'm not. I'm lucky. Yeah, I'm wise. Straight up. Fuck you. <laughs> You, you got pay? you yeah, got a couple you. more fucking heartbreaks and fucking rock bottoms. I'm fucking on the up and up now, you know. Yeah, we got to get to these younger kids because it, it's 15 seconds is all they are interested in. If you don't catch them by that, they're on to the next 15 it's seconds. It's crazy. So. It is crazy how quick. I got a 16. Well, I got a 14 year old who's about to be 16, and and then I have a a, a five year old too, uh, Cole, who he's a. Uh, Autistic, he's nonverbal, but it's a total different trip from having a kid who can like communicate to one that does it and just the whole uh trip of the autism and, mm -hmm. and what comes with it. It's like a challenge and like not being with the mother, but being uh communicating with uh, her and her husband. So he's got like a stepfather. And we all went to Disneyland the other day. It was like at one time there was like a war going on, and to be able to go to Disneyland with them and all hang out, and it yeah. was good for the kid. You know, so put all that all that stuff aside for that kid because, like, he's got a long road ahead of him. And, and shout out to anyone that's dealing with autism because it's a, it's a real thing. And, like, Amen. it could be in the blood or it could be in the, these little vaccine, the 18-month vaccine or whatever's in the baby formula or whatever's in the rain or shit. It's raining I feel like I feel like sometimes it's, it's a... It's a lot of different things. It's crazy. We're living in a fucked up And time. it is a tough road and... I'm sure people don't talk about that as much. And no. It's hard. Like, it's really hard to raise somebody like, so. Like, he's still in diapers. Yeah. But I, I got it to where he, like, he'll, he'll let me know when he needs to poop, and I'll put him on the toilet, but he's got to be on it. 
Because sometimes if you're not, he'll poop castle your shit. Take it off and just don't want just this poop. Just despite you, yeah. I'm gonna put this poop right here. Yeah, oh, right here on like, this controller. <laughs> so you probably had to have a lot of patience, just oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. So what does that look like in terms of like care and school and like? He's in a great school. And uh, I'm not gonna say where, but <coughs> out there they take care of him. He's probably gonna be a <coughs> engineer or like a painter. Or like some kind of master. So he's piece. really smart. Oh yeah, he doesn't yeah. talk, but he'll like put blocks together perfectly symmetrical. And I'm telling you <coughs> though, I grew up with a couple kids my age who were like that, who now work in like aerospace and like yeah. work for NASA and shit. Like they, the 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 brilliance of their minds is so insane to me. Like it's beautiful, first of all, but second, <coughs> like their brains function on another level that. Like you and I could never comprehend, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it's like. What makes them tick? Mm -hmm. And I was warned too going into it because his uncle, Brandon, shout out to Brandon, he's autistic. Mm -hmm. My second baby mom's brother. He, but he, the first day I met him, he told me, he's like, where are you from? I was like, Redondo Beach. He told me how to get to Manhattan. Mm hmm. Not Manhattan Beach, Manhattan, downtown New York. From oh, you want to take the the C train to you guys should take the Metrolink South, and then you get on. He got every bus to get me. His brain works crazy with trains. That's his fix. His trains. I'm like, that's amazing. That's insane. I had a I I knew a, a kid that uh, if if he read a, a 900 page book, like you ask him like mm -hmm. where, what chapter, what page, he'd recite it. That's like, crazy. And you're just like, what? And he got made fun of all the time. Like, he was constantly just, up. like, picked on. And you're like, bro, this kid could put you all to shame in a game of numbers. And, like, but he was different because he had he had some, like, he's socially not. He had that lit, little lick of the tism. Yeah. As Vaughn said, yeah. the little tism. I swear, I'll be <clears throat> honest, when I was in third grade, I wasn't compre I would read, but then I'm like, have to read it again. I'm like, I could read it a little bit, but I'm not remembering. So by fourth grade, they had put me in special ed. With uh, so I was in special ed. Do from you think fourth, it was like ADHD? Oh, or for something? sure, guaranteed. They had to put me on this shit called Silert, like Ritalin, battling Silert. Oh Silert, God. Weird, okay. And I, I was a Silert like this. A zombie. Stone out of my mind and like break me out. So I was just like, I smoke weed for that way. So I just smoked weed and I hid the Silert. And then I let alone, I told my mom later. You know what's crazy? I know so many, I was talking to somebody the other day whose kid has ADHD and said, I keep finding her hiding her pills, like her meds, like she's not taking them. And it's funny that you said that because that's just maybe a thing like you yeah, just didn't want to take her them. meds. Off my, that's why, that's how I started this whole podcast. There was Got an it. Adderall shortage. And they put me on fucking Vyvanse, and it made me psychotic. See, there was a big uh, a hustle and tussle about this Adderall shit. So when I was with someone, they're like, Adderall this, Adderall that. I'm like, well, where's Adderall at? Let me try one. And I did. I fucking went to sleep. Yeah. But that, like, that means you have it. Yes. Like, people are like, I don't. But I'm like, Adderall makes me normal. Adderall kind of brings all this down a little bit. Yeah, mine, mine was the, the Xan. I've never done any of those. I like. That's the mind erasers. <clears throat> Is that, they, is that what they call it? I do. Wow. Or like, I, it's not started with touring and just laying in a van for nine hours. Like, oh, hey, just take this. You'll wake up in Texas. Fucking Fuck woke yeah. up in Texas for sure. Like, you. <laughs> we, but the problem is you drink on that stuff and then you black out. I mean, and like, then you're like, look night, at me. Like half yeah, of these where tattoos, am I? I I'm like, what the hell has happened? <laughs> I'm like, you took, <laughs> what is that tattoo? I was like, I don't know. What does it mean to you? <laughs> You're looking at it. So, what does so, it say? So did, it's still there. Did you? How many tattoos have you woken up with? Like a lot. I got. I got the funniest ones though are probably the tic tac toes with the homies. <laughs> All cats games, by the way. Not no one won these things. You probably can't see it. The viewers at home, but they're not the biggest. But they're the badass tattoos. We can play tic tac toe, but no one's ever won shit like that. Or like face <laughs> tattoos are just. I got this girl's name so big on my head one time. I was like. What the? F Could you have done it bigger? Like, no, you said do it huge. Like that Drake one. I was like, and no one stopped me. And then once again, Zen. You have no friends in your circle, my friend. Well, yeah, I guess, well, that, that. 
So there was one friend there, but he was videotaping it. Like, I'm going to videotape this so you know I'm telling oh. you not to do it. So He said, no, no, He's no. He's actually a piercer on, uh, in Vegas. But yeah, I got that one covered up. I'm the king of cover-ups. I had one here, too. Uh, At what point are you just going to, are you ever just going to, like, black out everything so you know what fuck, why? Like a did? Or, like, yeah, or, like, like, I noticed a lot of people who were all about tattoos I have, like, the, started. I think it's the baby blood that they're, they're, they're starting to drink over there. The the little, are you going to go there? I go think, for it. I think Fucking, might be a you have cult. any stories? I've been to some parties, but not like that kind of shit. You know, baby's okay. getting killed. What was it called? Um, the baby blood that they drink? Do they, what's it called? Uh, they, they drain it. The, they scare the shit out of kids right before they kill them. And it releases some kind of endorphin. And, the, and then they take that and they drink it. Like frogs and DMT? Oh, no, that's cool. I'll do. I'll smoke frog DMT right off the bat. Have you done it? Yeah, with a dab rig. What, have, what did you... Uh... Answered any question you had in your mind. I, everybody says that. Yeah, but you got to do a big hit. It's like three times. Blow it out. Hold it and blow it out, and then third, you just, about 15 minutes later, you okay, that's, that's, I knew it. it. But it's different for everyone. The first time I tried, it didn't even work, so there's that. But then really? Later, yeah, first, I don't know if it was old or something, I smoked it on, a, on top of weed. But the second time, I did it in Vegas with some down asshole, and he was like, sit down on my tattoo chair and dab this, but don't be a <laughs> pussy, hit it really hard, and I'm just like, talking to you, let's go, dog. He's all biker, dude. I'm just, and mind you, that has um, those tile things, it's like squares. Each square just dipped down. Okay, when I was in Vegas, so I went top of the spear, and I was like going through all these questions. I like, oh, all got answered already. What do you want to do? Whatever you want to do. It's, you're living. Go live. Okay, I came back down. Like, what did you live? Like, just live. You just got to live. Be happy. Love yourself. And then the rest, fuck it. If no one else is going to agree with your love that you have for you, that's the door, and there's also a back exit, and there's mm -hmm. also two exits to the side I could throw you out of because I love myself. And that DMT, I haven't done it since. So until I have like a major breakdown, I'll go to Venice Beach where you can DMT hit by yourself, not even taking a hit. It's in your body where you breathe a certain amount, certain times hold it in. There, this guy will show you. I do. He's doing it all the time. You just breathe certainly and hold it in. I just go to Venice right now, and and uh, who am I asking for? You're gonna look for this guy who's. I'm looking for the DMT up, dude. Like, pull him up on YouTube when you have time. Oh, DMT okay. Venice breathing Beach. in Venice Beach, and he'll fucking sit there and just he does these deep breathing techniques, and like some people forget to breathe in general. I was gonna say you have a really good memory. I, I did have friends with elephants when I was a kid. I, I got along with elephants, and I heard they have good memories too. Elephants, is that correct? Elephant brain, they're very smart. They, oh. they remember everything. I might be too for this conversation. It's getting there. It's, and I'm, I'm just sipping the bourbon, taking my time. Take your time. Well, while, while we're taking our time, let's play a game. Charades? Yahtzee, no. what do we got here? No. Tic-tac-toe on my leg with tattoos? No, 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 no. Uh, a... do, I, do I have to read? This is where it gets dangerous. No, I won't make you read. Yeah, this is a pretty cool shirt, huh? Shout out to Jesse Hertz. Yeah, I'd like it. No, we'll, we'll bootleg any shirt and they'll go sell it at the swap meet. Lucky for them, they haven't got arrested yet, huh? There are 10, but they exclusively wear cargo shorts in the summer. I just wanted to know what they're hauling. What's their freight? What's in the cargo shorts? <laughs> oh, fair. <laughs> fair. What, you never know. Like, some of the cargo shorts, they might have something. What some you dump hauling? in the trunk. What's your freight? <laughs> what's you hauling? I might say, let's, let's, let's see what's in the cargo shorts before we dismiss them. They're a 10, but they watch really weird porn on VR. No. Still a 10? So, no, I don't. I mean, what, what's really weird porn? Because I, I had this bus driver one time, and he'd watch this stuff called Slap Happy, where the guy would slap the girl with every part of the offices. At the end of it, wash her off in the toilet, like a swirly, and then like... Send her off the bed. I'm like, what is that kind of weird stuff? And no, I don't know. Do you have a specific weird kink? I mean, just a mutual attraction for someone, I guess. There's, I, I'm just lame. Okay, no lame. boundaries. No boundaries. Come on. No boundaries. No boundaries. No. How about this? That's your kink. No, here's is my a chick kink. with no boundaries. No, here's my kink. Having sex in the rain on top of a car while a train is driving by. Brrr. 
Boom. How many times did that happen? That's my king. That's what I'm saying. That when that happens, then I'll, I'll be like, yeah. Oh, so it hasn't happened yet. No. But like, if it does, yeah, that's my. That's what I want. I want to have <laughs> on top of a car while it's raining, and the train just <laughs> and hits the horn. The train is very specific. Matt has to be a freight. It has train. to be a freight train. Full of people just walk. What the hell? Is ah, it a, there it is. You know? There it is. The public sex aspect. Got it. They're ten, but they don't know how to do their laundry. Fine as fuck. I'll, there's nothing more than I love to do with the, a, a fine chick's laundry and fold it up nice. Because then they're going to put it on and have it all nice and ready for you. We, oh, I know where that's at. Not, oh, that bra? Right over here. Oh, perfect. I like you. You're I'll in. be honest. That's the bourbon or the marijuana. Oh, no, well, that was GMT. Wait a minute now. Frog. Frogs. So how many times have you done it? Twice. No, you know what? I've done it like three times. Now they have these pens and i'm not even gonna lie i know everybody... the other night i was at the uh shout out to homeboys bone thugs and harmony we went to the 30 year anniversary at the no noco theater whatever in uh, la nokia nokia or no, some... and yeah nokia theater downtown or... state of the Game's art it's lame i don't There's... know why i keep trying to make this game happen it's fucking dumb okay uh, go ahead so long story shorter than the long the story i ever told my buddy <laughs> gave me a mushroom dmt kind of things like a chocolate mushroom with dmt so uh, that was the other night. and Somebody told me about that the it other day. It was like, insane. And, and a lot of heavy things were happening. So at one point in time, I'm like, what is going on? And I'm like, oh, yeah, that guy gave me that stuff. And he's like, how was that stuff? I was like, Coachella. Let's <laughs> sell this stuff at Coachella. It gives me, uh, it's a pass. So you've been on parole before? No. Oh, I've you been, haven't? No. Oh, I thought you said when cops asked, like, what parole? They, because they assume. They assume I've been on parole or I've been in prison because of the tattoos. So, like, I've been in jail overnight. I've never been more than a day. I'm more of a crook. I, got, I don't get caught, as they'd say. I get away with stuff. Not nowadays. Careful. No, no, not no, where's crook. the wood? <laughs> no, but I grew up around criminals, hardened motherfuckers that would just... I know about prison. I, I feel like I've been to prison. I'd, I'd live with a homie who, if I didn't make my bed in the morning, I'd, you know... The push-ups regiment, like it was prison. I'm like, dude, we're not Fuck. in prison. But he, he knows I know all about that, and I was on the the essay side of things. And I had other friends who were on the white boy side of thing. And like, yeah. when they met each other, and I got them hooked up. Oh boy, they they were they're like, you're not allowed in this car. Like, you gonna be a rock star, homie? You don't want to see this. Don't come yeah. in here. That's one thing that's always kind of blown my mind about like race and shit like that is. I mean, you immediately get separated by race when you go, in, oh, right? Fuck. When you go inside, and so it's like I go to Ralph's. They think how I'm, do you not perpetuate the same fucking cycle if you're always? I go into Ralph's. I'm well. Like, this is getting cut for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that no, no. that last three seconds no, no. Is out. Just saying, just saying, like <laughs> like Chucky Chuck's the new Kanye. Go ahead. No, what? but I'm saying like they. So I assume because of the tattoos of the way I I I, I looked at them oh. automatically either a skinhead or some kind of a biker or some yeah. kind of racist, but they don't know I'm actually an underground rapper that could probably out rap their ass if it came down to it. So like I'll show Mitchell respect and like one thing you don't do is when you walk by other people and they do like the smile, that awkward kind of just say or like, yeah. hey man, what's up? Yeah. Instead of just giving that awkward, like I'm kind of nervous, like people don't even really look you in no, the eye they, anymore. They, they'll they look all at your, look down. They're looking at their phones. It's weird. You gotta say, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Eye contact. Even if people. they're looking at their, if even if they're not looking at their phones, like they, like people are actively trying not to look people in I'm the a, eye. It's bizarre. I'm a talker. I don't shut up sometimes. So like, I just moved in to the spot. I lived there before, but like, never really got to experience like the neighborhood. Yeah. And I finally had a night off. I didn't have a kid or nothing. I was like, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go out. I went to Chili's. Sorry. I went to Chili's. I had a... Fuck yeah, Chili's. Chili's was popping. I had the quesadilla and a big old um, margarita. But then I, I messed up and I had an IPA and a margarita with the quesadilla. And I went back home with my friend. I was just... At Chili's? Chili's, yeah. IPA, margarita, quesadilla. Quesadilla. And then and then it started raining. And then my joint. Homeboy came, picked me up, went to the pad. And I go, I'm not done yet. So it was 7.30. I'm like... So I got an Uber and I just looked up this pace. Shout out to the Cove in um, Marietta. It's called the Cove. The Cove. The Cove, yeah. And it's Wednesday nights. I didn't know, but it was it was line dancing night. And I walk up and they're doing the hoot scooting boogie. Hey, the whole damn place is going line dance. I'm like, oh man. Did you get in? No, I got. I was just involved from the bar. Why not? 
I was just kind of playing the wall at that point. But I, I, I did talk to the guy who played it, and we we're probably going to end up doing a show there. Like, it's a cool little spot. Sounded good. And I just had a great time by myself. But I was talking shit to the guy next to me. He was like, he kept looking at me. He's like, you talking to me? I was like, yeah, man. <laughs> Sorry, I was just talking. That's it. But I just became friends with the dudes next to me. Just It was fun. So, yeah, that was my Wednesday night. And then I threw up at like 3 in the morning because I had there, I went for the artichoke dip. Oh, oh, hey, wait, you left that out. It's yeah. Chili's? No, no, I, I, this is at Cove now, so this is later on. I went there going straight, tequila. Let me get a tequila shot and Modelo's. Had about three Modelo's and a shot of tequila. And then I had the artichoke dip, but I mixed it with some green salsa. Oh, no. Oh, it was good. It was really good. And I'm then, sure, uh, going down. I was like, what am I going to end this with? And then I ended it badly with the white Russians, two white Russians. So there was some kind of party down here that I wasn't invited to. Oh, no. <laughs> like, oh my God. I no. somehow made it home. I, I did it. I did it. I made it home and I just like woke up and something was telling me, okay, you better get up. And I was fully close. So I, all the way, I was like shirt off, like almost in like, <laughs> Not to be graphic, I know you're a woman, but I got it all out and I thought it was going to be worse than it was. Like, wow. Oh, he just wanted it out. Nice. Brushed my teeth, went right back to bed. Woke up, I woke up the next day, whoa, what? You probably what? felt like shit the next day. Yeah, and I yeah, think I had no. to get up early, too, to get my, my kid, too. And I was like, fuck. Pulled up, got the gas, but didn't put the gas in the car, so I left. I'm like, oh, shit. So I made the crazy illegal U-turn before I got the sun. I was like, where are you at? I was like, I'm five minutes away. But anyways, yeah, Wednesday. That's why I thought today was Sunday, because Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday messed you up. Let me finish this drink. What is your... What is your uh, best hangover remedy? Pickle juice. Pickle no juice. No way, really? Pickle juice or just have another beer. Have a drink. Sun, Hair of the dog. Cold water. The ocean will do it. See, you jump in that ocean right here. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah. Good Lord. Seal dick. You're going to be cold. <laughs> That's what. <laughs> that will definitely help, though. Yeah. Sorry about the seal dick comment. That was, that was rude. Seals are cool and they don't Fucking have to. Fucking make all the seal dick comments you want. Uh, You're fine. Whale dicks. Whale dicks. The whale's vagina is the size of your mother's. Okay, now we're getting into it. See? Yeah, go. So, okay. <laughs> so, tell me. If I wanted to become a rapper, like, where would I start? I'd say just keep it real. Just keep it real. Don't rap about something you don't know about because one day you might get asked about that and have to do that. And... You don't want to be put in that predicament. And you want to do something that's going to be in front of people. Do you want to rap to the internet? Or do you want to rap in front of people? Maybe do it to like 75,000 or 75 people. I've rapped in front of two people before. The bartender and the sound guy. Fuck yeah. And they were like, cool show. You know, fuck yeah. Best show of all time. And then we played shows with like over 3,000, 10,000. The gatherings, there's like 8,000 people. Yeah. I've done some pretty big shows and been on some... Uh, very opportunities that people would die for. But my uh, suggestion would to not become a rapper. Yeah, why? I don't know. I see you more as like a... No, like, I meant oh, not me no, specifically. Oh, so anyone out there. I don't think... I think... Um, I don't think I qualify. I don't think anything about me, like... Three credit, like 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 wrapping up. I like, grew up. I grew up in like Orange County. I don't. I don't know that. Like, like you got <laughs> Orange County. She's a rapper. Fuck yeah, she's, no. she's got bars. She, yeah, 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 for sure. But she's like, they put she her. She drinks in. baby blood too. She's on Epstein's list way too many times. So Kelly vibes. Do you like? Uh, did you see the Cat Williams? Oh my God! Shout out to Cat Williams. Yeah, that. Did you watch truth. that? Did you yes. watch it? Yeah. Tell me every. What did you think? I thought he's amazing, but he might have been telling some fibs. But like, he could talk that shit because he got the receipts and he know. I seen back that that whole conglomerate of million dollars Hollywood industry. The people that run are such sick fucks that I don't put any of that past anybody. That's yeah. why I like I've been involved with people like. They think I'm famous. I'm not famous at all. Like sometimes we'll get noticed, like, oh hey, Chucky Chuck, take a bong at or like sign my hat or something. Like, hell yeah. Never be like, don't come to me when I'm having dinner with my family. <laughs> How dare you? But these people that can't go out when they're covering their head and they're involved with these million dollar contracts is like a different kind of deal. They're owned by these people. So they lose their 
them themselves and they lose their their human beings they're owned mm -hmm. so like i love being underground like it's it, keeping a hardcore underground you get that freedom to talk that shit and like it's weird i don't know where i'm going with it but yeah. no 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 fuck that last part that last part is like you don't have to subscribe to everything that's happening right now because no one's mm -hmm. saying you you could lose this all if you disagree and that's nice There's that's nice that, to that, not that. have to you know people are losing their jobs for the way that they think right the now the cancel was a cancel culture yeah yeah suck my dick i know cancel these nuts Kama Kings, what they stand for was legalizing freedom of uh, marijuana. Yeah. Oh, now guess what? Everyone that used to want to arrest us, now they want to molest us and invest in us. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Judge D. He says it's the best on our shows. He goes, we have been on the forefront of this for years, but they think the weed's legal and this. Hell no. There's still motherfuckers locked up for a seed doing 20 years for an ounce of weed. Fuck yeah. We, we, ain't, we ain't stopping this fight till those people are out of jail. So like that, that shit is real too. Like, there's still wars to be fought. And my goddamn caterpillar. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I should have just asked for your permission to touch you. I just went in. Wait. That. Because, like, no one's talking about how all of those people are still serving still, time. Still this day. And a lot of it in some, especially in the, the, the other parts of LA, where like 20 year old cases. Hey, this weed is still kind of illegal across America too. Like sometimes we'll get to these states and where would the common king? So like I've become yeah, like Texas, right? Texas is one of the worst, mm -hmm. but now you can get CBD and stuff from there. And there's some big weed it's shit crazy cracking, how like in Texas now. But shout out to Delo, he's really smart. He, he's like, yo, get rid of all the weed. Like we'll, we'll gather up all the weed we want. We'll go to Airbnb, smoke as much as we can, stash and dash it, give it to the local gas station dude, or like hide it. Because we're going to get more from the next company. Yeah, next you know? So you don't want to get pulled over on the side of the road for nine hours. Because he was torn with someone before his old partner that like had more than weed on him. Like He was like, I'm not going to get trying to get caught with nothing. Because I watch On Patrol Live. That's one of my favorite shows of all times. Stop it. On Patrol Live is my shit. I think you might be my new favorite person in Come the on, entire world, right? Tiny What's up? up? What's so, up? Every time they find me, they're like, that's all you got? They fucking get yeah. Give it back. Be On honest. patrol or cops, man? Give I, uh, Cops is the OG first reality TV show of all times, but nothing beats On Patrol Live is as it goes down. Like maybe a little bit they could. Cuss. You don't think some of it's fake? You don't think it's like some of it's like On Patrol? Yeah. I don't set know, up. Man. I don't know. It's, it's hard to like tell. You're like wrestling. You're like I can't tell what's real and what's not. I had a show in Toledo, Ohio, and I was telling my dad, I was like, "Hey, I'm going to Toledo." He's like, "Oh, well, you better make it on the." On Patrol Live, I was like, is that a fucking, is that a challenge? Is that a challenge? And oh, we damn near almost got it. We almost got on, on Patrol Live in Toledo. Shout out to Toledo, Ohio with the nomads. But that was like a couple months ago. It was freezing cold out there. Oh, my God. It's been, the weather's frost. been so fucking weird everywhere, dude. Like, like, all over the place. It's just... Nine it, inches of snow. We're going three miles an hour through the freeway. Like, we got to get there. Recently? Yeah. I think... Um, Two, three, four weeks. So yeah, January in the beginning of the year. I've done twenty flights already this year. Twenty flights. Oh my god. I'm not trying to brag or nothing, but I'm freaking flyer. These nuts. That shit has got me. What do you What do you do? To layovers. Like... Layovers. And I, I pray for this window. But seat. what do you do to like keep your uh, keep yourself entertained? Like, um, what's your number one? Oh, it... I'm I'm a probably when I over an ass. I entertain myself no matter what. I'm in my own world at all times. Right now I'm talking to you, but I'm back over here. I'm like, I can't wait to, um, I've got other things. My head is weird too. Like it's, I'm, I can entertain myself. I'm my own favorite show. Do you ever get caught like talking to yourself? Yes. <laughs> yes, all the time. Or And sometimes I sleep talk too. Like, yo, what were you saying last night? I was like, oh, fuck. I talk to myself like openly, like a whisper and be like, what the fuck? And like not see somebody walk by like looking at me talking to myself and yeah i'm, I'm like, always like what are you doing you're pacing back and forth i'm like i'm trying to do five things at once and i don't know which one to start what yet hold on let me figure it out at some point it's literally just become a tick like where i'm just like it's almost inherent i just randomly do this shit man this is so much better than the uh i don't know i uh with tony i drank four locos Phew. 
Shout out to Tony, man. I haven't seen him since uh, the, the the Rainbow Room, smoking with Pakalika, and uh, Big 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 Mo and all the homeboys. Cypress Hill, Jesus, those are the days. The the yeah, well, we got Ford Locos. I saw that. I was prepared for Ford Loco. You want one? Oh, you know what? I will. I'm gonna give you one so we can do the face cam, but you don't have to drink it. I'll dump it. I'll it's... take it home. I'll, I'll finish it on the way home <laughs> with a hamburger or something. Shit, I'm not going far. We're close by now. Oh, you are? Yeah, because my other friend's out there with the car. Hold on. Yeah, we're, we got business to attend to. <laughs> we got water. Avion, good water. Oh, shit. Are you on Snapchat? Uh, I am. I just started one. <laughs> I had one before, but I was like, you can't be on Snapchat. You're going to get pictures of vaginas. Four locos. Four loco. Four, four not Ford? Four. Yeah, what did I say? I, said, I thought it was Ford, like the car. Really? Man, today old. Four. <laughs> don't don't put that one out there. Four. Four. Four loco. Lo wow. Four. I don't know what the four means. The four loco. I say fucking chingao. Oh, four. There's four of the loco people. No, I knew it was four loco. Thirteen percent alcohol. Orange County don't play around, huh? <laughs> I don't know that anybody's drinking this. To be honest. Where'd you get it? Online. Seven Eleven. Oh, so someone's swapping these things well, for sure. Well, yeah, he's, but he told me only homeless guys drink these. So You're somebody, right. I, I somebody bought... on TikTok told me that Four Locos were making a comeback. So I was like, oh, that's cool. I'll just make a Four Loco podcast before anybody beats me to the punch. You gotta give them a sponsor. Some... No, no one's other than Four Loco. No one's like biting on the. So what are we doing? Just tasting it right I now. I also feel like maybe it's. I don't. Yeah, just taste it, and I'll dump the rest. It's. It's. Uh, I need you to. You can look at uh, look at that camera. Which one? This, this one. one. No, no, no. That one. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. Mom. They, hey, mom. Price is right, Bob. Wait. There you go. <laughs> Your hand was in the. Oh, don't. Ooh. Tastes like uh, watermelon uh, sour patch kids. You're the first person to say that you liked it. Really. That one. The melon is a little bit sour. Oh, I got some Sour Patch Kids in the car, too. I think this might go good. Oh, make some Four loco Jungle Juice. Yeah, I watched what well, Tony was saying, too. Like, you were talking about the warning. You're like, yeah, and then you sign it right here. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. <laughs> you should jump on that. And before, you got a copyright there. If Four loco wants to, I'm just going to keep tagging Four loco. Maybe they won't. I will say though that that shit messes me up. It messes no. me up bad. The one after Tony, <laughs> it, it, I'm sure it, a lot of there's a lot of illegitimate kids running around because of these things. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah, there's a lot of jail time. I feel like, but I feel like for Lucas, the drink you have at like 3 a.m. when you've lost all inhibition and you're fucked up and you're like, let's make this nice night twice as worse. Yeah, you four, know? yeah, I feel you. Uh, four locos the drink that you get, you don't have to tell people because they already know when they see you drinking they're like oh fuck <laughs> this fool's got a four local at four in a.m. Um, don't fuck with him. Do you guys do you have new music coming out? Thank the Lord. You know what music is life, and yes we do. Here's the thing with the Kamal Kings they got a conglomerate of 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 music over the years over 25, 26 years they've been doing music. Mm -hmm. I've been lucky enough to maybe got four or five songs with them. But now that I'm actually full blown in the group and filling sho shoes of uh, other past members that have passed away, I'm, we're, we're not strictly singing their parts. Like, of course, we pay tribute and we'll sing the hooks and we'll do some parts, but we are integrating some of our verses to those beats. So it's a mashup. And that's been going over well. I think like that has been the funnest part of the process of just seeing the fans identify my verses to the Cottonmouth songs and those and just the energy of me and D-Loc and Judge D, Taxman. We got Gillies comes out sometimes. We got all kinds of homies that rip, that are ripping, but uh, that's the core of the Cottonmouth Kings right now. And we finally got in touch with the guy who makes like um, the production, the sound, the, the the heart of it. Like, you know, you ever heard the King Spade albums back in the day? Mm -hmm. Like the, those... Who come mm -hmm. the motherfucking key? Yeah, Kuma guy, those beats, those, those banging beats. Yep. That guy, Kuma guy, uh, just sent us a whole conglomerate of beats. We got in contact with him. So we got that original sound that we could probably just say, 
shit, fuck, barbecue, chicken, pizza, nut, and beers, and there's a song. That's a rap. But we had like three days off in Concord. There's a... You should have kept going. Right? But there's no beat. Oh. We don't need a beat. But All right. The point All is, right. we started, we had three days off in Concord. Uh, shout out to homeboy DJ Clay and Shaggy Two Dope from ICP. They called me. And they're like, yo, you guys got these shows coming up with this janky promoter. You might not want to do those shows. So uh, it was too late. And we ended up canceling three shows in Concord, California, up north. And also, shout out to Rehab. I don't, you ever heard of the band Rehab? Yeah. We just toured with those dudes. Super cool. Oh, yeah. Cool. Shout out to Rehab. Shout out to Rehab. Super cool dudes. We're out there with Scotty Austin, Rehab the Crown. Great tours. The Strange, Day, Strange, uh, Strange Days tours. And um, I forgot what I was saying before Locos, man. Four, four locos. That's why I'm at four locos. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you sixty seconds. You think you can come up with a, a verse for the Off My Meds Pod? Off My Meds Podcast every day, faded, dedicated to getting medicated, holding it into my eyes are faded, dilated pupils, but I'm sober as a mucinex pupil. Wait a minute, is that equal to rap? <laughs> I don't think so. That sounds like crap. Bring it back, select a. Real rap shit. Bust your knuckleheads with a slapstick pool. Uh-uh. I'm cooler than that. I'm in the jacuzzi with a feathered duck hat. Playing duck duck goose with a dragon and a backpack. With Colgate and a tattoo of a Tic Tac. With a big old chick on his back that weighs five times fatter than his mom was at. When her dad was in the middle of saving my best friend who's dying of a heart attack. Sammy the Bull's back. Chuck Chuck freestyle off the brain. That's all I got to say. That's just freestyling, but that's stupid. Fuck. You know, having, being high while hearing that, I, I'm going to have to go back and listen to like every, I, did you just sense. rhyme duck hat in the most <laughs> bizarre way possible? I don't know. I, 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 yeah. I got caught up on the duck hat line. I lost like. Some of my friends might watch it like, here he goes, this stupid fuck. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Sometimes wait, I'll just wait. be... So let's do another one. Hold on, I want another one. Uh, Sometimes I'll just be in the middle, people having a conversation, and in my head I'm like, just start freestyling. Just... Do you actually start freestyling? I used to just, people like, dude, what are you doing? That's I'd just go to like the second floor bar. You yeah. That place? I'd go there and hang out. In Huntington? Out. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, Chuck? I was like, oh, what's up? It's the ground. It's down in the town. And I'm just rapping. I'm like... And they called me the next day, like, yo, I saw you last night. I was like, what? They're like, yeah, you just were not stopped rapping. I was like, what? Zen. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. But, um, I don't, I mean, you know, we're working on some new music. I probably want to spit something I wrote recently that I can remember that, like, um, we've been doing some of it live. It's on a new song. It's called Your Future. And it goes, um, too many times in life people give up, like when times get tough and they get stuck in the rut. That's when the tough get the shining and focus on the dub, overcome obstacles and then they smoothly rise above. I'm talking discipline and having respect in yourself to be a champion in this life and have Pop-Tarts on the shelf. You know what I'm saying? Fuck yeah. I'll give you that much. Oh. So you gonna add Pop-Tarts on the shelf in there? Uh, trophies is what it's on the record, but like. All right. I, 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 I make my music was like always angry, and I would release my anger through music. So if you hear, my catalog is more like, "Fuck you, smash you in the face." Don't give kid. a fuck. Fuck your mom. Yeah, you know what I mean. Your mom hides my dope in her butt. You call your mom my slut. Um, what let's... do you have against my mom? No, I'm just in general, like not your mom. I'm just saying. Just, just why rhyme. your mom though? It Go just ahead. rhymed. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Uh, but like, Continue. I've realized that like my kid now is <laughs> really like. Hey, Dad, what is this song about? <laughs> and you're like, he's. I heard him talking. He's like, yeah, he's showing his friends where we're blowing the weed. He's like, yeah, I probably can take over my dad's business. And he's just <laughs> blowing, blowing weed in the crowd. What other shows you got coming up? We're working on Laughlin, Nevada. Shout out to OG Quartz down in OG San Diego. He, he does like the dabs. Well, he blows the glass, but he's also like a, he does, he helps me book shows and stuff. We were yeah. working on a Laughlin, Nevada for Cinco de Mayo. Fuck yeah. So they're going to have uh, marijuana and margaritas. And then uh, July 27th, we'll be doing the High Desert Juggalo Party. Shout out to the Juggalos. We'll be doing some crazy I'm headlining that one. And then uh, Ohio, September, we've got Afro Man coming up. 
I fucking love yeah, Afro Man. Yeah, that's my Man. dog. That's probably one of the funnest shows I've ever done was Afro Man. They shut down a water park. Does it, Afro Man want to come on my pod? I'll, I'll holler at him. Can you holler yeah, at a couple of them for me? For sure. The ICP dudes be like, ICP loves to to go on podcasts. So wear sure face would. paint, and they like good looking you. chicks too. That they like they love Californian girls. Listen, so they'll, listen, they'll, Chucky, I'm gonna be bugging you and being like, hey, fucking. Have you heard of Ouija? I'm cool. Have you ever heard, you ever heard of uh, Ouija Mac? Yeah. He's he's like the the, the new little home. That's my little home okay. too. So all right, I fuck with him heavy too, and all his little conglomerates. So 420, we're doing the. Uh, Virginia, just, Virginia Cannabis Festival. Fuck We're doing yeah. the Pennsylvania Cannabis Festival. Fuck yeah. We're doing the Ohio Cannabis Festival. Mm-hmm. Three days in a row. And then we're working on the new record, filming videos. I got some stuff going on with Kobe Raha. Can I head to, you ever heard of Kobe Raha? Can I be in one of your videos? Yes, of course. Well, you I, just shook your head no. You said I fucking see, uh, no. Get no, out of here. Yes, of course. Just kidding. Go ahead. We're about to go to the studio after this. And lay some stuff down for the uh, my homie Kobe Raha. He's a X Game gold medalist. I love that. So you ever watch the guys that do the quarter pipes? Uh huh. My boy, number one, Slinger on Slayer. He's got a, a YouTube channel, Raha TV, and he's gonna have us do the intro to the. Um, Fuck yeah! So I got to work on that tonight. And then we're going to uh, finish up some other projects. I've been on the road, so all you guys that are watching this, I haven't done your uh, feature yet. I'm going to the studio and I'm gonna do your feature and your cameos. <laughs> And if you haven't got a shirt in, go to dgaffofficial.com. Dgaffofficial.com. Stay off the meds, people. Have a Ford Loco and Chucky Chuck Dgaff, Cottonmouth Kings, Hench Lord, South Bay, North Side Redondo, Burl Street. You know what it is. King Arbor in this. Fuck yes. Thanks for coming through, bro. Fuck yeah. You know? I love it. No, that's dope. And these are my lucky glasses from that I found. Yeah, first, and don't don't forget your car my, my, keys. Oh my god, I found these on the first flight, and they're 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 Disneyland glasses. See? How much shit have you found? Out? Oh no way! Do you know how they're lucky? My lucky glasses. Some Disney adult is really upset that they lost those. I never saw my first flight, and then I lost them. And shout out my homie Billy Gears who found them, but I I needed them for Disneyland. I went the other day. <laughs> I love Disneyland, dude. What's your favorite the, ride? The Cantina. At Disneyland, they're just they're sitting there drinking that jet juice. Don't, don't, don't catch me at the cantina, dude. Getting a free drink. No, I said, what's your favorite <laughs> ride? Oh, I like, you know what? I like Space Mountain. Space Mountain's a shit. But uh, I, I'm old school, man. I want that, that tower, tower of Terror, but now they switched it to the Guardian of the Galaxy. It's pretty cool. I mm -hmm. like that. I still haven't got to do the... Uh, Star Wars one, though. The Revenge. It's so good. When we were there the other day. Oops, sorry about the mic. <laughs> gonna have to do that one but yeah i love california adventure it's uh every ride over there i don't know soaring over california still soaring over california that's the one have you ever been on drugs and done soaring over california do i have to tell on the bible yes yes <laughs> uh, what kind of drugs I, I, first time i went to that place I, they didn't have california adventure it was just disneyland and it was a senior trip and i was on mushrooms my homie pushed out and didn't take any. We rolled a couple joints. I took the whole eight to myself. We went to Tomahawk Island, smoked the joint. They wanted to go get some uh, Mickey Mouse uh, pancakes. And I'm like, I'm going to Toontown, homie. Solo, dolo. Boom, boom, boom. And I got on the tram with some kid. I like a trip, his legs bleeding. I came and found them later. They're like, I was roaming by myself. We used to do, okay, we're going to keep this going. You ready? Edit this in. Not some scary farm. Yeah. Oh, I love not scary farm, dude. Heads. I love not scary. Not farm. scary farm. Thirty heads deep, all on ass. <laughs> I swear to God, thirty. I probably walked out of about ten of them. We we lost uh, people. Were twenty five. You ain't coming back. Type shit. We got there and there was like that that big show. Freddy Krueger's like, welcome to the show. We got our first guest, Ellen DeGeneres. That Ellen Jenner's look like, and they just killed her right off the bat. <sighs> Blood everywhere. And my mom was like, yeah. On acid? We were on acid. And then, oh, and, no. and then Freddie goes, that was for everyone in the crowd on acid. And we're just like, yeah. And no one else said nothing. They're just like, but we had some OGs with us. So we started going through the, the mazes where they switch them into haunted houses. So this one was the alien one. And my homie was just stuck like this. Like, <laughs> I'm like we got to go. You He's probably like, lost some good people that day. They didn't die, but they didn't make it home in our car. <laughs> they might be dead now, but man, yeah. 
It's not scary for me. So that's fun. No, I don't got a lie to kick it, but that was probably one nah, of those stories. fuck yeah. But next, if you want to do episode two, we could. Have. I think we should definitely do this again. I'm dope that, like, I'm stoked that you came We're gonna through. Freeze. This I'm going to drink a couple more of this and we'll freeze this. I'll freeze it right now. Hold one more sip. You want more? He came for more. I'll freeze it. You better come back. We'll make this a part yeah. two. Can you? Redo it? No. <laughs> Look at this camera and do like, uh, look happy, like do an excited face. I got those, yeah. <laughs> Can you do a shocked face? <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yes. Can you do a laughing face? <laughs> Can you do a don't give a fuck face? There we go. We're good. You guys are funny. I think we're good. I don't really want to know what you're doing with it, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, that's going to be the thumbnail. Okay. What so, is that? So now they, like when I post the podcast okay. clip, it'll okay. be like, so, gotcha. so try it again. Flip it back. Can you do like the most horrific thing you've seen on ASIC's face? Like you're looking at yeah. one of those monsters. Oh my God. Fuck yes. Oh my God. Fuck yes. Yes. <laughs>